Uh, is it a 10 out of 10 or is it a 1 out of 10? Well, I had both you guys. Today I am rating some lesson systems, some routines that are in, that I did in my classroom previously last year and the year before, and I am rating them. I'm giving you the honest truth on what went great and what went horribly. Let's get into it. So first up on the chopping block is my Velcro circle. Last year I was so proud of myself. I made this perfect Velcro circle. I was so tired of my students. First of all, just getting into a circle is always a challenge. And second of all, when we did circle dances, the circle would always get smaller and then we'd all like, like have to talk about, oh, it's getting smaller. And then we like yell at each other and try and get the circle bigger. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna like Velcro map out a circle that's perfect for my students. And I took a little clothespin and I put a piece of string across it and I took little pieces of black Velcro. They were probably like, about that big and I would just put them equally spaced around in the circle well drum roll please I would give this a 4 out of 10 it worked but it went it had a strong start and then it went downhill so the first part was it did work out beautifully but my younger students could not understand that I had to have so many velcro spots for my biggest class you know like some of my classes are bigger some of my classes are smaller so when I got to those younger kids they'd always be like well there's another velcro spot open and I'd be like yes and like you know I explain but they just quite can't conceptualize that so I always had those things throughout the year and then later on my students would pick because they're just so small Students that were close to them and their, their spot where they sit permanently usually kind of lined up where a Velcro thing was, they would always pick them off. And so then my circle wouldn't be perfect. That perfect circle that I mapped out perfectly was gone and I was constantly putting them back and then kids were always like, oh my goodness, it's you know not perfect. So, yep, we're just gonna make a circle without a guideline and we'll be fine. All right. <laughs> is color coding shelves last year i put some painters tape i got painters tape in all different colors and i color coded like the red is all the metal instruments orange is all the like wood instruments yellow is shaker scraper and i would get this like a six out of ten honestly i did not utilize it as much as i should have last year the tape held out pretty well but i do feel like i need to every year or two replace it it did get a little bit dingy there at the end of the core or uh, the end of the year but i just didn't utilize it as much as i could i'm gonna think i'm gonna leave it but i didn't really ex take time to explain the color coding system to them and so i think they could be helping me a lot more with putting things away or i could be like go get a shaker scraper and they know exactly where to go so six out of ten that's okay Next up is no stickers. I did water bottle stickers for my older students for individual behavior and I did like smelling stickers for my younger students and I got so tired of students being like, well, do I get a sticker for this? Or uh, when we lined up, they'd be like, are there any stickers today? Like no matter how much I said, like if I don't say anything, then there were no stickers today. Like it was always, or that, you know, everyone would look really great in line for, and then once I give the sticker, they'd be like, oh, you never give me a sticker, you know? So I was like, I'm not having it. I did not do stickers all year and it was a 10 in the 10. They finally, at the, probably like the first quarter, we were still asking about stickers, where are the stickers? And then the end of the rest of the year, they totally forgot about it. And they're just like, oh, okay, she doesn't do stickers. And we just did the right thing because it's the right thing. And sometimes we didn't and that's okay. And that's life and those are kids. Next up is mallet instruments. I color coded and put a number on each mallet instrument because I almost have a class set of mallet instruments for my students. And especially with my fifth and sixth graders, I just loved this idea of like, I would have them be numbered and I could assign a student to always get that instrument and bring it back to their spot. And it might be a little bit of like teacher error, like I just didn't do enough job, like a good enough job breaking it down each step, but it was a two out of 10 for me. I just, my students, First of all, the alto xylophones, metallophones, even for a fifth or sixth grader, is really hard to get out, especially like mine. The pegs on the pegs are broken, so the bars fall off, so they get two steps and then a bar falls off, and then they like put it back on and then two steps and then it falls off again. Um, 
Another thing is I have bases on wheels, which is really nice, but if you don't push them the exact right way, they will literally just topple over. And we may have had a base xylophone go down. So again, this could be teacher error. I think it still could maybe work, but I'm just not quite going there yet. I still think I'm gonna find some other ways. Also, even when my students got all of the instruments out, the engagement level definitely did go up because there was no downtime, but it just got a little chaotic. It was just, it was a lot having everyone play at the same time and we'll work our way back up to that. But for now, a two out of 10. Number five is clothespins. So I put little clothespins um, with numbers. I saw this hack, I think on TikTok, where I have, I have dots with uh, colors. So like red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Purple? Yeah, I think I do have purple. And I gave each student also a number on that dot where they sit, so they have a dot. So I might say like orange one, or I might say yellow two, or I might say green four. And so I have those different color clothes pins or little mini ones and I put the numbers on there and I just have them in a little bin here and I would just pick them out randomly for, for questions, for answering, for if we have a game and we need to pick someone to go, I would do a random. And this was a 10 out of 10. It was so nice, especially cutting down on students, feeling like they never got picked, or you know maybe I would pick on students that always raise their hand, and maybe some students just need that little encouragement to be like, oh, well, I might as well just answer because you called on me. Um, so I thought that went really well and I really loved the clothespin aspect because then I could just like clip them on. I had a little bin and then I would just click them on the top, the ones that I already did so I could get them out of the way. And then at the end of the day or end of that class period, I just put them all back in. Along with that is setting up my groups or my students in color groups. So this helped a lot. This was like an eight out of 10. So before I used to just have like a semicircle or one line, but now I have my seating chart where it's like four red, four orange, four yellow, and they're in like a square already. So it's like red, 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 orange, 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 yellow, 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 yellow. So then when I said like talk to your color group, they could just turn in and they're already kind of in a square. So it's easily to see each other because before I just had like the red row, the orange row, the yellow row, and it was hard for like quick pair share or quick group work for them to like kind of figure out who they're working with or talking like the four of them, they're in a row, like it's hard to talk. So this way they don't have to move anywhere. They literally just turn in and they're ready to talk to their group. So eight out of 10, it's great. I started using clear, band, clear bins um, the last two years. So before I just kind of would take any bins I could and, and you know, you gotta take what you can, free is amazing. Uh, but I started really prioritizing getting clear bins because I love the idea of being able to see right away what's in there. I have a lot of cabinets, so I'm really help, um, like thankful for that. But sometimes, I've, especially if it was up high, <laughs> like I was not getting that box down. So having clear bins, 10 out of 10, so nice to see everything at a glance. Next up is mailboxes. So I used to have these mailboxes. They were like the three drawer stair light bins and I would sign each, each classroom teacher a bin. And this is like where I thought like, you know, if I had any papers for them, I, I would store it in there. I have in the past had a turn in bin and it would be really hard to like keep track of the classes and keeping them separate if I didn't have like a, a paper clip or a binder clip right away. And so this is like a five out of 10. I just didn't really utilize them enough. I don't do, I just realized I really don't do enough paper things. I just, I am not a paper, worksheet kind of gal and so I just didn't use them but if you and, and no shame in that if you are someone I think the mailboxes would be great because again you're not worrying about getting things mixed up amongst classes because that can be really tricky um, but if you don't do papers as much I just don't think I mean I just had a wall of mailboxes and we never touched them all year Finally, my last one is linked agendas. So I have been using agenda slides for a long time. I really love them. They're like a cover slide with a list of activities so the students know what we're doing right away. They don't ask me. And it's a little visual help for me when I am having trouble remembering what's next. Well, this year, instead of having my visuals like all pulled up already in browser, so I have like 20, 20 tabs open or not having them embedded into my, um, my Google Slides. So I didn't have just like these long, big uh, PowerPoints or slides where it's just all the visuals. 
Instead, what I did this year is I linked them. So I would just have it, uh, I would link it within my own Google Drive so that file, that visual could stay in its own little like folder and not have to move anywhere and not have to be copied. And then I would just click the link and it would pull up and open exactly what I need right away. And then I can just close it right after. And so it's now you don't have to even pull up a million things. You know, like, have you ever done that when you go into your, uh, school day and you look at your lesson plans and then you have to pull up every visual like if you have a link you don't even have to do that anymore you just like as soon as you need to use it you just click it so this was a 10 out of 10 for me ending strong i love linked agendas thank you guys so much for tuning in let me know what has been a classroom project or routine or system that you've done in your classroom and what would you rate it and why i would love to know down in the comments below all right guys see you guys in the next video bye